Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm not here with Geeky Sparkles. She's out and about today, but she should be back later this afternoon. Gonna talk more about Webtoon again. Um, you know, it's really interesting. Other people are starting to notice now that the DC Comics, the Batman uh, Family Adventures, Wayne Family Adventures series has way, way, way more eyeballs on it than any of the print Batman comic books. Now, of course, there's no barrier to entry. Anybody with a mobile phone or a computer can read these comics for free. So you're not actually asking somebody to shell out three to four dollars an issue. But, you know, we got to wonder if this isn't uh, going to have an impact. Now that we've got one of the big two getting into web comics, getting into digital comics, I have to wonder if the uh, corporate owners over there at Warner aren't going to take notice and be like, "Yeah, why? Why are we doing? Why are we doing these these floppy comics again? We can just put this stuff up on webtoons and then sell it as manga. We'll sell it as manga later. It's not, obviously not manga, but it's done in a manga manhwa style. And that's what all the kids are reading. So let's let's talk about uh, everything coming up webtoons." Uh, everything coming up webtoons. Uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 235,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. We talked about comics, talked about digital comics, print comics, uh, manga. Uh, we're going to talk about webtoons. We're going to talk about web comics. We actually started out uh, in our internet content creation adventures doing web comics about 12 ish years ago. Uh, we started out with, well, I actually had uh, another webcomic I worked on, but we started out uh, really getting into it with Shadowbinders, which you can buy the print version of the first 10 chapters at shopclownfish.com. But we actually mirrored the comic on Webtoon for a while, too, when Webtoon was new. And this was 2012-ish, I think, something like that. And it's, it's blown up since then. We kind of knew this was going to happen. People that were doing webcomics at the time, running their own websites were sort of like, wouldn't it be nice if there was a YouTube for digital comics and long came Webtoon and, and Tapastic. I think Tapastic was actually first and then they became uh, Tapas. But long came Webtoon and people were like, well, you got to be careful because Webtoon is owned by the Korean equivalent of Google uh, Naver and they have really ridiculously deep pockets and they probably will become the de facto for digital comics. And that's actually what happened. They did. It took them a while, but they did. And now uh, they've gotten so big that DC Comics and Archie Comics are doing comics over here. And I have to wonder how long until Marvel uh, gives in. They've got their you know Marvel Unlimited app or whatever. But if everybody's over on Webtoon already, it doesn't make sense to, to really try to drive them to your own app, does it? I mean, I don't know. But yeah, Archie Comics has a big Ethel energy. I'm a big fan because you profiled AOC. Anyway... <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, so they're they're doing comics over there too. Obviously very different from print comics. Uh, there are a lot of things about uh, webtoons and web comics that are different. And noticeably the art is usually done quicker than it is on, on print comics. It's usually done digitally, uh, you know, and it's, it's meant to be kind of read and read it and move on. Read it and move on. And that's kind of where we're at with it. But um, yeah, this article came from a site called Fortress of Solitude, a comic site. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, DC's Batman webtoon proves what industry pundits suspected, which is basically kids aren't reading comic books. They're reading webtoons. Um, and this is probably true. Webtoons and manga. They're not reading floppy comics. So let's go through this article by uh, Sergio Piera, Piera, Pereira. Uh, 2019 Webtoon pulled in over 100 billion views annually. It's a gobsmacking figure that clearly paints how audiences want to read comics in the modern age. Now in September 2021, DC got with the times and released the first Batman Webtoon titled Batman Wayne Family Adventures. Unsurprisingly, the Batman Webtoon is a huge hit, sitting pretty at the top of the new and trending chart. Uh, written by CRC Payne and inked by Starbite, Batman Wayne Family Adventures isn't trying to replicate the formula of the mainline book. It's a lighthearted and breezy read, choosing to focus on the dynamic and relationships between Bat family members instead of crime-fighting action. You'll either love it or you won't love it. 
Um, you know, and it's it's tailored for Webtoon. They know what what people want on Webtoon, and it's it's not, uh, you know, it's not uh, Frank Miller's Batman. You know, that's a, that's a totally different audience. Um, so this is interesting right here, though. At the same time, it's proving what everyone has said for a while now. Webtoon and similar formats are an untapped market for Western comic book publishers. Ironically, this has been crystal clear for years, but they've chosen to largely ignore the platform in favor of doing what they've always done before. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good promotional tool. The, the, the problem is, Webtoon, not only do you have to flip the content, but you also have to flip how, how you expect to get paid. And this is going to be the biggest hurdle, I think, because Webtoon, unless you've got a deal with Webtoon, they don't make a lot of money, not, not tons of money like, you know, Western comic book creators or publishers are, are used to making some of them. Obviously, a lot of them don't make, make very much money. But um, if you go to Webtoons and you talk about making money, they talk about their ad revenue sharing program. And it's a pretty high threshold to get in. It's just like, it's just like uh, YouTube. You have to have 1,000 subscribers and 40,000 monthly page views for your series. And then you apply for review. Um, they also have the Canvas Creators Creator Rewards Program. Now, when we were on Webtoon, we were part of, I, I think, the Canvas or an early version of Canvas where they actually would dump money into your Patreon depending on the number of views you had. And we actually set up a Patreon just to uh, you know, get money from, from Webtoon. And we actually did okay. I mean, for a webcomic, we did okay. Uh, you know, we got usually about $800 to $1,000 a month extra. And this was stuff we had already published on our own website. So we were getting money from our own website, from ads on our own website, and then we would print books, and then we would take those comics and put them over on on webtoon. So we made, you know, some money. I mean, more money than most people make, you know, doing webcomics. Um, but you know, it's still the grand scheme of things. It's not a lot of money. You know, I mean, you might make a couple thousand dollars a month doing a webtoon and it might, you know, and the ones that are the most successful are the ones that update the most often. Again, it works a lot like YouTube. Now in the case of DC, you know, they had this, uh, deal so I don't know what their payment terms are. I don't know if they're getting paid. I don't know if they just told Webtoon like, hey, we're, uh, you know, if you promote us, if you promote our stuff heavily, we'll bring, you know, Batman to the platform. I don't know what their long-term plans are. I don't know if they're looking at like, you know, bundling this stuff up into a book. Now, I am a little out of it as far as, as how people on Webtoon are monetizing their comics beyond ad revenue. I know merch sales are a big thing, uh, but it's usually only the biggest comics. I know that, uh, you know, Laura Olympus, they actually have merchandise and Hot Topic. I know because my daughter wanted some of it uh, and they have a series coming out, but it took them years to years for that author to, to get to that place. Right. And uh, most people who are on Webtoon are going to make money just off of, of the Webtoon. But um, I have found that there are creators supposedly that can make, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. This is um, now this is from about two years ago. This is on Medium. But yeah, they talk about Webtoon artists getting a fee from the platform and that earns advertising revenue. Here's a survey of 558 artists, response percentages and annual income. So you know, 9% of them, $10,000 or under $10,000, 19%, 10,000 to $20,000 per year, 23%, 20 to 30, 23%, uh, 30 to 40 and 23%, 50,000 plus their average uh, income does not seem to be very high among those who answered that their annual income is more than 50,000. Many of them earn more than a hundred thousand a year. This is kind of like print comics too, where you know, there really is no middle class. You know, it's either you're you're like an A-lister working for Marvel and DC, you know, getting Hollywood deals, whatever, or you're sucking dirt working for a lower rung publisher for ridiculously low page rates. There, there doesn't really seem to be a middle class, you know, for, for comics creators. So the gap between the rich and the poor is large, as in many creative fields. Another thing to note is that 87% of respondents work more than eight hours a day. 22% said they work more than 14 hours a day. So in this regard, it's clear that Webtoon artists are never a good job with excellent working circumstances in a healthy atmosphere. Um, kind of kind of like manga, right? 
I mean, it's kind of like manga. Uh, but in a lot of cases, it does seem like Webtoon creators do most of the work themselves. You know, it's not like, I mean, even in manga, there, there are teams. Um, but let's, let's go back to this anyway. The uh, comic book industry has found itself in a state of flux for some time. Now, is that what we're calling it? State of flux? While comic book movies and TV shows pull in outrageous numbers, the publishers struggle to attract younger readers to comics. They've tried everything. Reboots, making heroes younger, and even creating books solely for a younger audience, yet nothing seems to stick. The reason for this failure, according to this author, is simple. Times have changed. Just like most people are consuming music and media differently from how they did 20 or 30 years ago, younger comic reading audiences are as well. Why should they be dropping $4.99 on a title that's connected to 20 others and will be rebooted in a year anyway? I actually agree with that. I don't know if I necessarily agree they're all going to go to Webtoon, but I think this is a big reason why manga is exploding in popularity. For 10 bucks, you get a pretty sizable chunk of story and it's probably not going to be rebooted. It's very easy to follow manga. You know, you pick up volume one and you continue to volume two and then volume three. Instead, they can read something simple and enjoyable like a Batman webtoon for free and on a trusted platform. Uh, This isn't to say the market for floppy books are dead. There will always be a market that values the physical medium, much like vinyl collectors (laughs) <laughs> much like vinyl collectors comics are, are collectibles now they're not actually a viable medium uh should that be the core focus of the business looking at the engagement of some of the webtoon originals it's evident that the audience is far more invested in these series and what's taking place at marvel or dc now and frankly yeah i agree marvel and dc have nobody to blame but themselves many 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 missteps made over the years Now, there's going to be another shoe that drops, obviously, with this Webtoon experiment, I think. And, uh, you know, we'll have to see where that, because I can't imagine they're making much money off of this compared to what, you know, DC is going to want. And then we have, you know, the Warner Discovery merger coming up, too. Take uh, Lore Olympus as a prime example. Yeah, Lore Olympus is doing really well. Again, merchandise, um, books, uh, TV shows. But Lore Olympus is the Raina Telgemeier of Webtoon. It, it, it doesn't happen very often. So if comic book publishers are serious about reaching the next generation of fans, they need to adapt and find them on their platform of choice. And this is why YouTube is kind of blowing up too. People are buying comic books off of YouTubers. People are actually making comic books about YouTubers. They are skipping line. And it's so funny when you get comic book professionals, they're like, YouTubers, it's not real. Those aren't real comic books. I'm like, what about the, the, the gaming channel YouTubers that are getting comic books and book deals with like Scholastic, you know, and it's happening. Look, there are graphic novels out there of, of YouTubers you have never heard of, but your kids have, and they're making comic books about them. Uh, was it FGTV? I think is one of them family gamers and that they're, they've got a comic book with, I think it's Abrams, like a pretty sizable publisher, the same people that put out the wimpy kid book. I think I'm not hundred percent sure off the top of my head, but I know I've seen the book in Walmart and I'm like, whoa, okay. So, so many people working for that goal. And if you're a YouTuber, because you've got the platform, you can just cut line. So good business practices says you should go where your audience is. So it's vital that comic book publishers stop resisting change and start accepting the inevitable. The success of Batman, uh, as a webtoon is all the proof they need. It isn't a fad, but the future. Well, yes, now we'll, we'll see. Uh, the, with more DC Webtoon projects on the way, maybe a tide is finally turning. Again, it comes down to money. It comes down to money. No comments. Uh, you know, are they making money off of this? And this might be something they were willing to bankroll for a while. But again, the, the dollar amounts aren't great on Webtoon. I don't know what they're paying these artists, these creators, but you know, a company like Warner and, you know, a company like Warner Discovery is going to want a lot more money or expect a lot more money than just an individual posting a webtoon being happy with, you know, $30,000 a year or whatever. Uh, They're going to want big, big bucks. So there has to be some sort of game plan here for this. Uh, You know, I'm not 100% sure, but it it definitely is is a good place to find an audience, just monetizing uh, that audience. Because like I said, you know, it, it... this is what you're looking at. Unless you're one of their paid creators, my understanding is their paid creators, they give them a base of like two or $3,000 a month. 
if, unless you're one of their paid creators, you're talking, you know, an ad revenue share and and up to up to a thousand dollars a month based on performance. So it's not great money. Now they do have on the app that you can buy chapters ahead, and I think that you know Archie's doing that too. Archie's not doing nearly as well as Batman though. You know, they're 181,000 subs are still pretty good. I mean, it's still very, very good, but uh, you know, nowhere near what uh, what Batman's doing. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, I, I, I mean, again, I think Webtoon is a great place to get eyeballs. It's just monetizing it is very, very difficult. You're going to have to, you know, bring in some money from from other things. And I do think this is the uh, the long term plan for these publishers is, you know, let's get them hooked on the comics and either sell them comics you know, sell them comics, collections, or sell them, you know, comics with these versions of the characters, you know, and, and see how that goes. I don't know. I am kind of curious what the long-term plan is, but uh, there we go, guys. I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later.